Yesterday we talked about grace. And so often when we talk about grace, we talk about it with another very special word, mercy. Noah Webster in 1828 defined mercy as the benevolence, mildness, or tenderness of heart which disposes a person to overlook injuries or to treat an offender better than he deserves. Better than we deserve, God certainly treats us better than we deserve. When we think of God's mercy, we automatically think about grace, and it's very easy to confuse the two. And although they're close in meaning, they're not the same thing. Grace is God's undeserved favor, and it goes beyond mercy. But mercy is God not giving us the punishment we deserve for our sins. When I was a kid, there was this game where you would clasp hands like this by interlacing fingers with another kid, and then you'd basically try to break each other's arms. I mean, not really, but you would push, and the other person would push, and you would push until it hurt, until one of you yelled mercy. That's what the game was called, mercy. And when you yelled mercy, you gave in, and you were asking the person to stop punishing you or hurting you. As humans, we all desire mercy. Like grace, we don't deserve mercy because we're all sinners, yet mercy is what we receive from God. The Bible shows us that the need we have is great. We all fall short. We need someone to step in. We need a Savior. We need a Savior who sees all of our actions, our thoughts, our deeds, but he doesn't give us what we deserve. Instead, he took what we deserve upon himself and gave us mercy. He saw our true need and he did something about it. It's his mercy that makes us worthy. As a result, we are set free to live a life of mercy toward other people. When Jesus delivered the series of blessings that we call the Beatitudes, one of them was, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. The Bible mentions the word mercy over 370 times. This incredible, awesome God who created us in his image is a God of mercy. In fact, according to Paul in Ephesians 2.4, he is rich in mercy. So what do we do with a gift like mercy, a gift that's obviously so big and that we don't deserve? There's a new term for an old idea. It's pay it forward. We need to extend that same mercy to others. Mercy doesn't necessarily mean to feel sorry for someone or show them sympathy. Instead, showing mercy to others is an intentional act. It's putting aside our own misgivings about a situation when it's necessary. God saw that. And he saw that because of our free will, we made choices that definitely weren't perfect. So he became perfection for us. Out of God's great mercy and love and grace, he came down in the form of man and lived the perfect life that we couldn't live. Jesus is God in the flesh, and he took on the wrath of God and got the punishment that we deserve. We all deserve to be punished. But yet God crushed his beloved and perfect son for us, and that's mercy. Mercy is helping others when they need help. It's about reaching out to someone, even when we suspect that they don't deserve it. The merciful see a need, and they do something about it. The merciful aren't constantly trying to punish others or retaliate. We need to seek to be a blessing, and we need to reach out beyond our comfort level to others. That's mercy. We don't always show mercy. We're imperfect people, and we struggle to be merciful to those we would sometimes honestly rather forget. But our intention and our desire should not be to forget, but to show mercy. We ask ourselves, would I want God to treat me the way I just treated that other person? What's our answer? That's mercy. Being merciful doesn't mean being soft on sin. It's instead making a conscious choice not to define our relationship with others in terms of those failings. We don't have to be blind to them. We just have to choose not to see others simply as failures. God, thankfully, doesn't see us this way. Certainly, he sees and knows our imperfections, and he shows us mercy anyway. When we accept that from God, it's so much easier for us to pour out mercy on others. In Psalm 25, verses 6 through 7, the psalmist writes, Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. We are children of God, so we need to strive to be like him. In Luke 150, it says, His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. And in Luke 636, we're told, Be merciful, just as your father is merciful. So we are given mercy, and we in turn need to be merciful. After all, Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful, 
for they will be shown mercy. Mercy is an encouraging word. Thank you.